Hello Data Plumbers! Today we're going to see what are the new things that you can find in the Kedro 019 series. As you probably know, we released 019.0 back in December and we haven't stopped making new releases ever since. So just a few days ago we released Kedro 019.3 and in this video I want to walk you through a few of the highlights that um, we've been releasing in the past few months. So I want to talk about the new documentation, the new project creation flow, the simplified mode for Kedro, and finally the new load node magic for debugging. Let's go. So first of all, you see here that we have revamped our documentation a little bit. So you have now the Kedro framework documentation as a separate sub-project here in the navigation. And you can switch to the Kedro Viz documentation, the Kedro datasets documentation, and back to Kedro. So if you're looking for a specific page, then it's now easier to navigate. On top of that, if you press Command K or you click on this search docs box on the top right, you can now quickly search using this nice search as you type functionality. So if you look for pipeline, for example, or node, then you see immediately the results from your query. You can also select whether you want to include the separates or not. For example, if you look for polars, then we want we have a mention for it in the Kedro framework documentation, but there's also the Polars dataset. So you have here the Eagles Polars dataset, the Lazy Polars dataset, and so on and so forth. About the code itself and the new features and so on, you have the full release notes on the release.md file that you can find in the repository. And you can read it for yourself. There's lots of good information in there. And as I was saying, I'm going to focus on a few specific things. So first of all, let's explore the new project creation flow. For that, I'm going to create a new environment and I'm going to activate it. I'm going to be using UV, which is this new tool by Astra that they released a few weeks ago that works wonders. And I'm going to install here only Kedro. Sorry, that should be install Kedro. There we go. And now let me do Kedro info. This is just for me to see that I have the latest version as the time of recording. So that should be 0.19.3. And since I only installed Kedro, I don't have any plugins in this environment just yet. So there we go. Latest version, no plugins installed. We're good to go. Now, how does the new project creation flow look like? If you run Kedro new, then the first question is going to be the name of the project. This is the same as you could find in previous releases. So I'm going to call this test Kedro project. And now here's the interesting thing. The second question is about what project tools do you want? These project tools are small tweaks or customizations with respect to the baseline templates that you can opt in or opt out. So you see the default option is none. So if I just hit enter, then it's not going to give me any of this. But um, for example, you can add the LinkedIn configuration that we used to ship, the test basic configuration with PyTest, some login configuration, a Sphinx documentation setup, and a few more things. So in this case, I'm going to tell it to give me everything from one to five, and the Kedrov is extra as well. So I'm skipping uh, PySpark for simplicity. And then the third question is whether I want an example pipeline or not. If it's your first time using Kedro, then I highly recommend you to choose the example pipeline because it's going to give you something to look at and get inspiration from. And otherwise, uh, you can say no. In this case, I'm going to type yes. And now this is going to create the project with my specifications and I have it now. If you notice, there's this Kedro new dash dash name tools example uh, command here. So if I want to recreate this project from scratch later on, or I just don't care about the interactive flow, then I could do something like Kedro new, then name test Kedro project, and then tools non, for example, I'm going to put here a non to distinguish, and example pipeline no. So this is not going to ask you any questions. Um, it's going to uh, apply these specifications to a new project and that's it. 
Now, if I explore this project structure, for example, with the three, com three commands, test scheduler projects, you see a few minor changes that we hope you like. First of all, we have this top pyproject.toml, and there's no longer one pyproject.toml inside SRC. You can see that if you explore this in a little bit more depth. There we go. So now the pyproject.toml contains both the project metadata and the Kedro um, project configuration. And also we have a requirements.txt at the same level as the pyproject.toml. So we essentially modernized our packaging standards to bring them more in line with how Python libraries are developed these days. And we hope this makes it easier for you to transition between um, existing templates and the way Kedro works. Now, having said that, what if you don't want to use the Kedro template for whatever reason, or you want to start from scratch for simplicity, or you have some existing pipeline that you want to use? Well, in this release, we made some small adjustments to the API so that it's easier than ever to use Kedro with the very basics. For that, I prepared a simple Kedro um, project. I'm going to install uvp install Kedro, but also IPython and the Polar's dataset to continue. One thing before I continue, notice that we have now to install the datasets separately, and this is because we removed them from Kedro. If you were using Kedro 018, you were using the Kedro extras. Now this doesn't exist anymore, which makes Kedro much more lightweight and help us as developer team and also you to have much linear dependencies. So I'm going to install all of this. There we go. And in this directory, I only have one file, which is this companies.csv that I took from our Spaceflight project. And this is basically all I need to start using Kedro straight away. Now, I'm going to create a catalog file corresponding to this dataset. So I'm going to open catalog.yaml with Vim. And I'm going to create a new dataset that is called companies that will have type polars CSV datasets. And the file path will be companies.csv. So again, nothing fancy here. This is a normal Kedro catalog. And now I can launch IPython and load these datasets. We have two objects that have always been there, but now we made it easier to use them uh, like this in an interactive setting. And the data catalog is the one that gives you access to the datasets and needs to be instantiated with a Python dictionary. So that dictionary will come from the config loader and that is what I'm going to do right now. So let me do from Kedro config import Omega config loader. And now conf loader would be this Omega config loader. And the only mandatory parameter here is what's the directory of my project. In this case, the current directory. I'm not making any assumptions here about base and local environments as it normally happens with projects using the Kedro framework, which is of course, our opinion on how you should be doing things in production, but for quick experiments and things like that, this is completely fine. Now, if I do conf loader and I extract the catalog configuration like this, then you see that I get a normal Python dictionary, which means that I can now do from kedro.io import data catalog, create my catalog object like this. So this will be data catalog from config, and I'm going to use the same configuration dictionary that comes from the config loader. So this would be catalog, there we go. And now once I create this object, I can do catalog.load companies and I have a beautiful Polaris data frame right here for me to manipulate. So I can save that to a data frame, I can do tf.head and do whatever I want. Now, I want to work you through a third highlight in this uh, series of releases so far, which is the new load node magic. I'm going to get back to my test Kedro project that I created before, and I'm going to install some extra dependencies just in case. So this will be 
UVP installing R requirements.txt. And, you know, since I chose before to have an example pipeline, that means that I should be able to do get or run right now. So this is just for me to check that everything continues working as before. So I created my project with my template. I have an example pipeline. And now executing Kedro run will give me the normal Kedro execution. Now I'm going to opt out from the telemetry. And as expected, this is going to start the execution. It will continue by loading the data sets, passing that data to the different nodes, and in a few seconds, this is going to complete. So let's give it a moment. There we go, and now I have it. So everything is working as before. Now, let's imagine that one of these nodes is giving me trouble and I want to debug it. Well, that's what the new load node magic is for. So let's say that I want to inspect what's happening in this split data node um, node here. So I'm going to copy the name and I'm going to execute IPython. Inside IPython, I'm going to load the kedro.ipython extension. This was already possible before. And what this is going to do is load the kedro configuration and give you a number of objects, namely the data catalog, but also the session, the context, and so on. There we go. And now I can run load node split data node. Notice the warning. This is experimental functionality. So if you have any feedback, please let us know. And what this is going to do is bring me the code that I need to execute exclusively this node. And look at this. It's using the catalog.load method twice to load both the data and the parameters. It's bringing me the import statements. These come from the notes.py where all these functions are defined. It's copying the function definition and it's adding a line at the end to perform the execution. So if I hit enter right now, this gives me a beautiful double of data frames, which means that I can do now whatever I want. For example, I can store this into xtrain, xtest, and then discard the rest. Sorry, rookie mistake. There we go. And now Xtrain is a beautiful Paris data frame, so I can do any manipulations that I want with it. And that is it for our Keto 019 exploration so far. This is the product of many months of work, so we highly recommend you to check it out. We plan to do more videos like this in the future, doing deep dives on specific features, uh, like the ones that we showed, or many more things that are in the pipeline. We also want to do interviews with members of the community, general updates, tips and tricks, tutorials, and so on. So if you want to see more of that, let us know in the comments what you would like to see. If you like this video, please thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. So thanks a lot and see you next time.